Okay, unrelated, but can the garbage truck in the background of my video please just stop? <laughs> It's North here, and today is a conspiracy on Juno, Greeley, and the Phantoms. I should probably note that some parts of this video are somewhat made in response to Julian 2's video that he already did, which was also a conspiracy, so link to that in the description. Also, before we get into it, can we just take a moment to acknowledge the fact that Juno is not an alpha? Like, look at these Jamaa journal pages. Where does it say that Juno is an alpha? It just refers to him as ancient hero. Plus, Juno lived before the alphas were even created, and Juno didn't even watch over his own species. He watched over the direwolves and sabertooth. I therefore submit for your consideration. Juno is not an alpha. Now, can you all please stop calling him an alpha before I strangle one of you? Okay, so first off, I'd like to point out that Juno's story has a lot of different things to speculate about, including a very possible foreshadowing to Pax being added to Animal Jam. But before we talk about that, I just wanted to talk about a secret passage in the Storming the Fortress adventure. It's very hard to get to and pretty complicated, but once you do get to it, you get to see this sort of phantom conference meeting and this sort of phantom presentation. The presentation shows a video of the Phantom Fortress invading Jama and Jammers screaming in terror. But if you flip a certain lever, the video actually kind of breaks and dissipates, and we get to see another video that was seemingly playing behind the previous one. This is symbolism for what is behind the invasion. What is the reason behind the Phantom Fortress invading? The video is of some sort of yearbook zooming in on a particular young phantom. My interpretation of this is that this represents that the phantoms have their families too, and like, they have their own reasons to do what they're doing, and you know, they have emotions, and they're not Monsters. I mean, come on, what else could this mean? Okay, I'm sure there is some other interpretation of this, but if there is, can someone please tell me what it is? Because I really don't know. So let's look at Juno's story. The first slide definitely leaves a lot to speculate about. It says the Phantoms are at their doorstep. They've sunk in their city and locked away their treasures, but it's not enough. The Phantoms will destroy everything if they let them. Just after they thought they had found a home in Belouche. I repeat, just after they thought they had found a home in Belouche. I repeat again, just after they had found a home in Belouche. Yeah, I really don't think it's a coincidence that as soon as the Ancients found a home in Belouche, the Phantoms invaded. Think about it. Animal Jam could have written this any way they wanted. They specifically decided that as soon as the Ancients tried to expand their civilization, to Belouche, further proven by the fact that there is only one ancient building in Belouche, the phantoms invaded. How could that be a coincidence? Besides, this combined with the phantom presentation just really makes it seem like Animal Jam's trying to hint at something. So it really seems like Animal Jam's sort of leaning towards the phantoms being redeemed at some point, yet I just listed all the reasons why they weren't even bad in the first place. Do they really need redemption? Well, that's a bit of a harder question to answer. No, in the context that they didn't really mean to start a war, but yes, in the context that they still trap innocent animals who had nothing to do with Juno or the founding of Belouche. Plus, they always contaminate rivers and poison plants for no apparent reason. I mean, shouldn't they be more concerned with trying to get their home of Belouche back and less concerned with trying to kill us all? Who knows, maybe they forgot why they hated Jama in the first place. So that's my theory about Juno and the Phantoms, but how does Greeley tie into this? Now this is where my video starts to kind of intertwine with Julian 2's video, because I do agree with some of the things he said. I mean, I'm going to be honest, I really don't think there's a connection between these two Arctic Wolf statues at all. But come on guys, look at the stone that used to sit in the center of Belouche. Look at the Temple of the Ancients. Look at the lines of power. I mean, there definitely seems to be a connection here, like you can't deny it. They all seem to be this sort of ancient force that doesn't seem to be for good or evil and that very few animals in Jamal really understand. So Julian 2's theory, at least the part of it about Greeley being evil, does still stand. But what other evidence do we have that Greeley's evil? Well, usually I wouldn't be so quick to jump to the conclusion that Greeley's working with the Phantoms because I know that Animal Jam has this sort of habit of just kind of putting Greeley in the spotlight and kind of trying to make you think that he's evil or make the player sort of suspicious or wondering if they can trust him. But this time there is just too too much evidence to support it. First of all, let's focus on the note that he left in the Temple of the Ancients. We see a lot of dot dot dots, which if this were actually dialogue and it was actually a person talking, dot 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 would represent a sort of long hesitation or long period of second thought before the character continues saying, or in this case writing, what he wants to say or write. Why would Greeley hesitate to say that Juno was a truly honorable warrior and that he wishes he could have met them? The only solution I can think of is that he knows that the other alphas and a bunch of jammers will see this and he doesn't want them knowing that 
that he's evil. So Grillo is about to write his real opinion on Juno, which is something negative, and then he hesitates and he remembers Alphas and Jammers are gonna see this, I probably should not be writing this. A lot of people say this is just part of Greeley's sober personality, but I really don't think so. Like if it were a theory, maybe I'd get it. If Greeley was trying to sort of speculate or sort of add on or ask new questions about Juno and things we don't know, then maybe I'd get it because he's sort of like adding on as he goes and he doesn't really know what he's saying until he's written it. But this is not a theory, it's just his opinion. But if you're still not convinced, there's a lot more evidence to go. Now I was going to go down all the paths of explaining all the reasons why I know that Greeley is evil, but that would take way too long. And I'm sure that a lot of you can probably pretty easily find your own evidence anyway, so it seems kind of pointless. Anyway, I'm just going to sum it up by saying that Greeley is evil, and I think that him and his knowledge on the lines of power will certainly come into play in the future of the lore. So, just to recap, Juno and the Ancients came to Belush, hoping to make it their home, not knowing that it belonged to the Phantoms. The Phantoms mistaken this for an invasion, and they attacked back, thus creating the Phantom Jammer divide that we still see to this day. Greeley fits in there somewhere with the lines of power, I'm still not sure where, but if you have any ideas, feel free to comment them, or if you want to add on to this theory or dispute it, there are a ton of other unanswered questions in Juno's backstory that could absolutely be built upon. I would really like to expand upon this theory if we can. I would love it if there was like some sort of twist where like either Greeley's acting as double agent or the Phantoms are forcing him to work with them and like using him as a weapon. He's not an asset or a resource. He's a killer. He will literally destroy all of you like he does not care. But if you have any ideas, feel free to comment them. I once made a theory about Zeos and Greeley, but maybe I'll make a theory on those some other time. Also guys, I just wanted to let you know that I'm sorry if you guys didn't understand some things in this video. I am kind of new to making conspiracies, so I'm not sure if I was completely clear in getting my point across, but feel free to ask me if you didn't understand something. So with that, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, yada yada yada. See you all next video. Bye.